Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Taco Bites, your daily bite of DGen. Episode number 207, I think, live at Boys Club Crypto uh, NFT launch with OpenSea uh, with CoCreate. Uh, it is an amazing night here tonight. Uh, some amazing people all around, and uh, we just had a really great time meeting and talking with some of the really cool builders um, within Boys Club and what they have going on here. And it's just been a crazy adventure of a night dancing and having fun. Uh, we are here with Eskimo in person. Eskimo, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing okay. My, my heart was a little racing. I think I was dancing a little too hard. Maybe not drank enough water. I don't think that you're... So health is how fast your heart can go back to resting. And that's what's a little worrying me at the moment. Uh, yeah, my heart is a, a little racy. Um, but uh, I was dancing pretty hard, having a pretty good time. I have my dancing shoes on tonight. Having a pretty good time. I just need your heart to go back to resting rate. Yep, yep. Sitting down outside, enjoying the cool air. Uh, we got to run into uh, our good friends over from Corner Market tonight. Uh, that was a really good time. Got to meet like the two founders from S Boys Club. Um, so it was a really cool thing to do. Um, if you are here at South by Southwest, um, it is a pretty amazing night. Um, and so, uh, yeah, just one, while you're out here uh, at South by, have fun. Be like me. Don't do drugs. And if you do... Take a scooter and, and have someone on the back of it completely illegally. It is not illegal. I'm sure it is. I don't know. It's off. It's Texas. Um, but one of the great things that we've been talking about with is, uh, you know, that we got a lot of people from East Denver are here. Uh, we, we saw all of our uh, friends from Lens Protocol as well. Um, and... Uh, yeah, it's been a pretty great time. Also, I think you're dead. I can't find your heart rate anywhere. Okay. Uh, I must be a vampire. I am old beyond my years. Um, and uh, as I get throat chopped, uh, it's going to be one of those things. Uh, the markets have been pretty crazy this past weekend. The And so, uh, but for those that were able to, uh, some some friends of ours, you know, and other people, you know, made those good plays buying up all the USDC that they could as it hit that dip. Um, and a lot of people got... I would of, love to have done it if I had $100,000. You could make ten grand. Yeah, you could have, yeah. Uh, risk $100,000. Eh, it's one of those things where, um, you know, some things you have to take as absolute. Uh, the thing with stable coins that are pegged uh, and not algorithmically pegged uh, and have backing like circle. It's one of those things to where we, the question was, would BlackRock allow this to fail? Yeah, no, not immediately. Um, I don't know what game they're playing with the U.S. government, but I do not believe that BlackRock's going to come out on the bottom. Why? Why do I think that? Why do you think BlackRock won't come out on bottom? I because BlackRock's the top? I think that because Aladdin is their solution program that allows them to basically run the Fed. The Fed depends on them to understand what assets they should keep, what assets they should sell. And I think that BlackRock, it's not a good bet to think that they're going to come out on the bottom of this. Do you? It's political. I think there's a lot of politics involved in how this all looks. <laughs> but if you think that BlackRock's going to come out losing, uh, they won't. I, I don't think they will come out losing, but they're not. People know that they're associated with Circle. But it's not like it says Black Rock Circle. It says Circle and then in small fine print Black, black Rock. Yeah. So I think that 
you have to watch that space really closely to understand how it, it really works. So this is a question that, that I just popped into my head because that is how, usually how questions happen. Um, with Aladdin being the predictive model tool, do you think that they that uh, a predictive model was done on seeing what would happen? That's not a, that's not an outside possibility. You're, it's a very good that's, that's a very good thought. So then it's a predictive so model of what would be the linchpin to, to stop it. Which banks were going to go the fastest? And how could they look? I saw a report today uh, that came out yesterday or last night that even the FDIC was surprised about New York State polling Signature Bank's charter. Yeah, that's true. Well, so with the F That's true that the news said that. So do you think that the, you know, one, is that a precedent of... Uh, a state showing authority over its own banking licenses? Uh, is that a sovereign issue? Well, I mean, look, for the last, like, two years, you could actually read, like, oh, we're not available in Iran, North Korea, and New York State. Like, that was really things that were written. Like, yeah. you couldn't get a binary. Like, being a New York resident, I found out really quickly when I was getting into crypto, I couldn't get a Binance account. I couldn't, I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. I found it re really quickly how restricted I was as a New York resident. And this is a perspective that I have getting into crypto. I have been restricted since the time I got in it. I know that I can go out to other uh, DEXs and do things but i have to go through gemini or coinbase essentially that is really my own my only options to get into the crypto world so do you think that that that's new york just putting its own stranglehold do you think it's well, they, politics they, they did that back from 2015 they they knew that they want they knew that this was a new york knew that this that crypto was a new generation of financial products and a new generation of financial facilities and ways of thinking. They knocked it out of the park for a little while. While other states that were not so financially focused um, didn't, you know, like the. It, okay, so there's our our states are myriad, right? They're they're some are financially focused, some are focused on freedom, some are focused on individual responsibility, some are focused on there there are different there's a patchwork of priorities across states, which I think is a good thing. Um, Do you think that New York meant? Look, going back to 2015, that's eight years ago. Do you think it had the foresight of what crypto was going to be? Yeah, well, uh, they do not suffer. Uh, they they knew that. How do I say? It? Uh, I don't know that they knew how well how it was going to grow. I don't know. I don't. I can't. I can't speak for that. What I do think is. They knew how to get a strangle. They were like, it's a new thing. Let's get a strangle hold on it now. Get a license. You need a license. Now, Illinois has created an incredibly draconian type of license. Missouri has created a bill passed that says, like, hey, you can mine here. So they're, the states are, are staking their ground. Illinois, you know, and like uh, the governor of South Dakota, she came out and said, look, they're trying to, the, the hard part is it's so difficult for people to understand the different, first of all, agencies that can govern this and the, uh, the amount of different ways that they can corral it. It's not just, oh, this is free speech or, oh, this is like, something about the constitution there are organizations there are bodies of the government that can suddenly create a law that you wouldn't necessarily think 
could, but it, it can suddenly cut off the ability for somebody to do something. So the governor of South Dakota just said, look, look, I vetoed this bill. I vetoed this bill because it was a UCC. I mean, we were like, we're not going to recognize Bitcoin as money. And I'm saying I'm not going to actually certify that in law. So I know I'm. And, and what happens is, like, I'm way out of my depth. Like, there's so much governmental, like, procedural understanding that one has to do both from each state to the fed federal government. <laughs> like, I know New Jersey is actually put a, trying to put a collar on this as well. And New York, New York did it first. Why? New York has a very strong very on target like we don't want anything to uh to threaten what we have here in new york state until we understand what it is and until we understand how we can co-opt it and yet they still haven't been able to co-opt it that's the truth I do not believe that they're been able to co op. They said they're going to kill Bitcoin. CME, like the head of CME, Jamie Dimon, people have said they're going to be able to, like, either kill it or corral it. I'm not sure. They can get a lot of it. Uh, so, one of the things with that, you know, that's brought a lot of turmoil to the markets. You know, some really great spaces over this weekend of some great minds like Mario hosting some really good spaces. Uh, uh, my favorite spaces this week have actually been with Simon Dixon and Caitlin Long. Um, really talking. Caitlin Long is one of the people I love to listen to for lots of reasons. One, she has a very long history understanding the detail of how banks work and understanding how New York works, understanding how Wall Street works. She, what I love about her is like she's still trying, she's swinging for the fences, still trying to do something important, which is like in a completely collateral back bank. And yet she's been told that she's her bank, Custodia, is a, is a threat to um. The banking system and the reason and, and and i finally understood it today the reason why she's a threat to, or custodia bank is a threat to the banking system is because she'd be a hundred and eight percent backed collateral yep. collateral that would set a standard and everybody'd be like well why wouldn't i want to be with a bank like that and that would just decimate the rest of the banking system which is completely fractional yeah. Like it's it's everybody's had to live with the idea that they put their hard earned money in a bank and they lend it out at tenfold. And they've just li we were living with that as a norm. And she's saying, No, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna actually back it. And they're like well that would and it would. They're right. It would threaten the stability of banks because those banks would go down everybody would want to be in her bank i finally got it today i finally understood it took me a minute so one of the things too with with uh janet yellen talking yesterday you know we saw usdc drop all the way down to i think 87 cents it might have even sold a couple places for 86 um but then yesterday afternoon, it was back up to around 94 or so. And then as soon as uh, the FDIC issued a release stating that all of Silicon Valley Bank's uh, depositors would be made 100% whole, uh, that was when uh, USDC started to repeg and started to go back up. And so that meant that Circle's uh, $208 million, roughly, I think it was, uh, you know, was going to be back, back in in the pot, um, and that only represented ten, almost just eight percent, eight to ten percent of their total piece. But that's still a big enough of a piece of pie that that you know rocked the boat. 
But what we did see was crypto around the house pump back up. Um, and so, and that's because people were finally starting to realize that their money in banks, uh, you know, uh, was not secure. And so one of the things that I did dislike was a lot of the FUD on other banks coming out. Um, yes, we, we, you know, the, the standard banking industry is, is messed shooting, up. People were shooting their shots. They people were definitely were, shooting their shots. They were like, hey, Wells Fargo, this could be a problem. This yeah. bank, this could be a problem. First Republic Bank, you know, people were saying that it was had people lined up outside of it on a Sunday. Now, no one would be lined up outside there, of a bank. There, but there were people, yeah. But there were people out there bringing down banks is not my. That's not, that, that's, that's it's not what I want to be doing. No. And bringing down stability of the market. And like, why do people want to be doing that? Because they want volatility. Because they can make money on volatility. That or they, you know, they just, they, they, they get their one shot to, to shoot their shot, like you said. Um, and so it's one of those things, as much as we dislike the current banking industry as is, it is our current on-ramping solution in, into blockchain. The question, the question in terms of America that I always have is, where else would you rather be? Exactly. Where else would you rather be? You know, I mean, Simon Dixon made a really good point today. He's like, look, I've had a way hotter time creating uh, banking relationships not in the United States. Okay, that's a wake-up call. Hey, it's harder. Why? Because the U.S. can just shut you off. And if you get shut off from the banking relationships that you have and the banking system that you have, you got nothing. However... Like, what is, I find it, like, a, a really interesting, the detail. I find the detail incredibly interesting. Why do we need to understand, like, exactly how SIVB went down or why? Yep. And, like, what is the timing of that? And why did the discount window open up just after that? And if somebody wanted to create a conspiracy theory, you could be like, oh, okay, you took three banks down that had anything to do with crypto, and then you opened up the discount window and let all these people say that they get the post collateral that is like 80% at value, but you're going to value it at par. Okay. So you want to save everybody else, but you want to tell crypto <laughs> that they're up against the wall, and why? And who are you fighting? Because FDX, like, they're done and they're already basically on house arrest or in jail. Oh, I thought SBF is currently playing his uh, Fortnite game and he's still not that good of a player. He has not improved. You would think that if he's on house arrest that he would improve at least by now. But I, 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 I detest, digress. Um, I detest. I detest my digress. Um, but so South by Southwest so far has been really amazing. Uh, gotten to see some really cool tracks today, uh, in the VR experience, even with, uh, Sh Shib Army. We got to see the Shib Army out and about and the lights have come on here. You know what that means? Lights out, lights on. Stay here. And so we're going to end tonight's episode with, as we always do, Eskimo, on the spot, 10 seconds, words of wisdom. I know who I want to take me home. <laughs> words of wisdom to live by. Uh, and uh, so, as always, we'll end with uh, our words of wisdom. A closed mouth cannot be fed, and you cannot feed a closed mouth. And we will end tonight's episode with the greatest knock-knock joke on the face of the planet. Knock-knock. George. Who's there?